This is a quick tutorial on how to operate the scoreboard here at St. Mary Magdalene. And for starters, we're gonna go get the equipment inside the AV booth room. Okay, so you can see the AV booth right there. You may also refer to it as the media room. As we come in, down here below, you can see this black bag. Sometimes the black bag will be found right here, but ultimately inside here, okay, inside this bag is the equipment we need to be able to run that score uh, scoreboard. Uh, also, just for, for reference, I currently have in this room, in this black bag, these are all the game balls, as well as the official score book and the rules of the league. Okay, all of that can be found in that bag right there. Now, normally we would be pulling out the scores table, which is located in this uh, room here, and we would line it up here and so that we can plug everything into the floor, okay? So to get this up, you may need a key. I'm just gonna lift it up here and you can see we've got the plugs here. As we unbox this, you can see we've got this extra cord here. What this cord is gonna be used for is to be able to plug from here into the scores table and that will allow you the position arrow, okay? To go back and forth based on the position of possession of the what's going on during the game. But here you've got the, the basics of the equipment. It's very basic. You're gonna pull it out. You're gonna plug it in. And as soon as I plug it in, you're gonna hear it make a noise. And you can see it says previous game, okay? Or resume game. Now, once I hit a button and say yes, okay? I'm gonna say yes or enter. It should pop up right there. Okay, so everything that you see here, okay, is the same thing that you see here. And that's all you have to do. Again, normally you would have a scores table with this on top, but for this purposes, we're just gonna go over the basics of the equipment. All right, so this red binder that is with the official basketballs, okay, you're gonna find in it all the rules. So let's start with the clocks, okay? So for all Saturday games, we're running it continuously for four seven minute quarters, okay? For Monday nights, we're running four eight minute quarters. So let's talk about how we're gonna set this clock. Okay, right now it says uh, 60 minutes. The way we're going to change that is we're going to say set main clock. We're gonna say, let's say seven minutes, okay? Then enter. You always need to finish with enter. The yes or enter command is always gonna make sure that it goes in, okay? So that's how you can set the clock. Let's say you have a timeout, okay? There's, there's usually a timeout. Usually I would basically just run a, a stopwatch and then just beep the horn. You don't really need to go up there and do and change it for timeouts. I just would not do that, okay? Would not bother about trying to hit a timeout button or anything like that. Just record in the scorebook the amount of timeouts that there are. Um, and, and if someone took it, run it on your phone, run it on your watch, whether it's you know a, a, the, the timeout, usually they're all 60 second timeouts. And then you're gonna beep the horn. Well, this is gonna scare the kids here, but I'm gonna beep it, okay? That's gonna show you and get everybody back in to the game. So to start and stop the clock, it's very simple. You can either use this device or you can use this, okay? If I hit start, it's moving, right? It is moving, okay? And you can stop it here, you can start it here. It's actually my preferred method is to use this, but you can also use this, okay? Stop, start, stop, start, even the horn. You can use that there as well, okay? So that's quite simply how you're gonna run the clock. When it comes to adding points, it's fairly simple, okay? If you have, let's say the, the home team scores, I would just do one, two. They score two points. They sh shot a three-pointer, okay? Now they just add it, add it a couple times. You can, you can obviously do here as well. 
I always just go by the one and make sure that I hit it twice. It's just easier for me to remember, but if you want to hit the two, you can. It's very simple. If someone hit a three-pointer, you could do it that way. Okay, I always just like to just go this way. That's just easier for me. Let's say you made a mistake. Uh, let's say the person was taking a, uh, what you thought was a three-pointer, but after the fact, you see that the official did not call for the three, and you need to subtract. Well, just subtract one. Very simple. All the other buttons that you see on here when it comes to tracking timeouts or team fouls and all that, I would not worry about it on this display, okay? Control it using the book, and we're gonna talk about the book in just a second. But that way, you do not have to worry about it. Same thing here, you have possession arrows, okay? Which the possession arrows, you can see that you can control up there by hitting that button, okay? So if the possession changes, now you can see I changed it to this side. I took it off. Now there's no. All right. Now you were looking at what a scorebook looks like. You can use these. There's some new ones that are a little bit different looking, but for the all practical purposes, this is what you can use. Okay. So when each team comes in, they are responsible for filling out their own books. Okay. So the name of the, the church, if they're the home team, the visiting team, all the players' names should be on there along with their jersey numbers, okay? When a foul happens, we're just recording the foul here so you can have the total number of fouls for the individual. But then you also have down here the number of fouls in a, in a half. Now, here's the thing. New rules changed last year to where when there's five fouls in a quarter, five fouls in a quarter, after that, you're going into a double bonus. There is no one-in-one -one situation, okay? There's no one-in-one -one situation. So once you hit five fouls, you're gonna notify the referee there's been five team fouls in a quarter. When that quarter ends, the five fouls reset, okay? The five fouls reset. So this is a little bit difficult to understand because it breaks it down into half, so you need to make sure you're, you're allocating what it is per quarter. But again, those are team fouls. Five team fouls in a quarter, you're going into the bonus. If you get five fouls in a game for an individual, you're out of the game, okay? Five fouls, you're out of the game. Technical fouls. Technical foul, you have to come out, you can go back in, but if you get two technical fouls, you're done. So for this keeping score, you're gonna write down did they score the basket? Okay, this was a two-pointer. These zeros, those are free throw shots, okay? So you can see over here, they took free throws, they missed one, but they made the other. They darkened the one in to show that they had made the basket, okay? So that's how you can distinguish between a free throw. If it's a three-pointer, you're just gonna write a three, okay? And you can see here, they kind of block these out as two halves, you're not gonna do that anymore because now you've actually got four quarters, okay? So you're actually gonna write in each quarter what they got. It might be best to maybe draw that line here so that you know, okay, I need to draw, always draw to the right of the line so that you're not putting it in here. At the end of the day, if you mess up and you have everything kind of listed in the first quarter, it's not gonna be a big deal. This is where you're doing the running score. So what the running score is, it should match what you have up here, okay? Um, and at the end of the day, this is what's official, okay? What is up here is not official, okay? It gives a running total, but this is what the official book is, all right? And if you anyone comes here and they bring their own um, book and they're like, oh, well, you missed a basket or whatever. No, no, no. This is the official book, okay? unless you are adamant and you are sure that you made a mistake and everybody understands that you made a mistake, correct it. But if you believe that what you have written is the truth, that's what, that's law, okay? That is law. So you can see here, they added up all these afterwards. So this person here did not get any total points. This person got 10. This one got a, a, free, uh, a field goal plus two free throws, that equals four. You can add it up at the end. So once you have added it up, 
what you're going to do is you're going to take a picture. I'm sorry. There should be in here something that looks like this. Now this is volleyball, but there, there hopefully is going to be like a, a record here of you putting down all the scores. Okay. Once you do, once all the scores are inputted for the day, when all the scores are inputted for the day, and you're the last person doing the scorebook, snap a picture and send it to me. Okay. Snap a picture and send it to me. All right. And again, if there's any questions about rules or interpretations, the official rules are in here. Okay. It goes through uh, eligibility, the general rules, participation, sportsmanship, the clock rules. Um, here you have specific age groups and where their goals are set, what size ball they should be using. Um, all of that is in here, okay? Um, right here, this is actually a very good reference. Again, look at what the most recent one is, but this one tells you, again, all the ball sizes per age group as well as the goal sizes, okay? Uh, what I'm showing you here is actually last year's book. We switched some uh, age groups up a little bit. So you might see some variations there, but this will be in your packet. So just make sure you're referring back to it as, as the law, okay? So again, thank you so much for volunteering. I promise um, your, your help is, is extremely valuable. Um, we could not do this without you. So again, whether it's operating the clock or this, at the end of the day, we're looking for two people to do this, not one, but two people to do this, and for um, you to kind of help set up and tear down. So watch the set up and tear down video for an idea of how to, to do all that. For all practical purposes, if we're looking at this gym, you shouldn't really have to be in that closet at all. You can see that's where all the tables are held. In here, that's where the chairs are held. So stacking chairs for the bench on this side and the bench on this side, as well as chairs for the table. The table is in there, okay? The table's in there as long with the crank that raises and lowers the goals. And then right here is where you would put the scores table, okay? And keep in mind, we're running the, the these end lines, not those. The farthest end lines sidelines those are what we are working with so make sure the tables push back enough so that they're not running into that and have a good time have a good time so it's very basic if you have any questions let me know and thank you so much god bless